They say membership has its privileges. I believe that. We should all get something back for the time and treasure we put into something we believe in. In our world, it's more wild sheep on the mountain. But what I have for you today extends a little further and can give back to you maybe a little bit more than expected. Your board of directors and I recognize the need to provide our members with another level of service to assist you, if you choose, in your capital preservation, tax savings, and estate planning needs. Now this sounds like a mouthful, and it is. With changing markets, trusts, tax codes, and new doors opening and others closing, staying on top of all this can be daunting. That's why I'm pleased to introduce our charitable gift planning representative, Mr. Winton Smith. Winton is a highly respected tax and estate planning attorney who has found his niche within the hunter conservationist community. Now, I'm no expert when it comes to give it twice and revocable trusts, zero tax plans, probate, charitable giving, and the like. But Winton is, and his services are free of charge for WSF members. So whether you have plans already in place and want a fresh set of trained eyes on them to make sure they're airtight and up to date, or you've heard about changes or new opportunities, or you're just getting started putting plans in place to take care of your loved ones and those things you believe in deeply, you'll enjoy learning from and speaking with Winton. Even if you have an estate planning attorney, dare I suggest that two attorneys working together is better than one. To get things started, Winton has provided a series of short videos covering a range of useful topics. Consider them arrows in your quiver or rounds in your magazine. If you'd like to know more or speak with Winton directly, Paige Culver, our development manager, or I can help make that happen for you. We talk a lot about the wild sheep family. Family is generational. So is the legacy we leave. Taking care of those that matter the most, and those things you believe in even after we're in our last sheep camp is what families do. Thank you for all you do for Wild Sheep and the Wild Sheep Foundation. I hope you enjoy this informative series. I want to visit with you about charitable gift planning. In past videos, we've talked about plans for the people you love. We're now going to shift and talk about charitable gift plans, which can also involve the people you love as well as your charitable interest. Let's start with current gifts, gifts that you make now. And what I want to suggest is that some Current gifts, as well as other types of gifts, are better than others. For example, there are current gifts that save income taxes once. There are also current gifts that save income taxes twice. And if one can make a gift that saves income taxes twice, that's better. It's going to lower the cost of that gift. And so let's start with an illustration of how that can occur. The most popular current gift is a cash gift. If you look on the screen, you see the benefits of a cash gift. Happily, the federal government intentionally encourages private gifts for important public purposes like conservation, keeping sheep on the mountain. How does the federal government do that? It does that through the income tax charitable deduction. And so let's assume that I'm making a $100,000 gift to the Wild Sheep Foundation. Many times what happens when I make that $100,000 gift is I get a $100,000 charitable deduction. That $100,000 charitable deduction, if I'm in a 40% tax bracket, saves $40,000 of federal income tax. So I get the joy 
of making a $100,000 gift, which costs me not the full $100,000, but instead $60,000, because I've saved $40,000 of federal income tax. Everyone likes cash gifts. They're simple, and believe me, the Wild Sheep Foundation and every other charitable organization loves cash gifts. But the question is, is there a smarter way for you to make that $100,000 gift or perhaps even a larger gift? And there is if you make that gift with some type of highly appreciated property. Now, let me pause just for a minute and tell you what I mean by highly appreciated property. Some years ago, I was making a presentation in Boise, Idaho. I got up very early in the morning, and I had to fly through Seattle to return to home. And so I arrived in the Seattle airport probably about 5 o'clock in the morning, I'm walking down the way to the, to the plane, and all of a sudden I see a coffee stand. And I stop, and I pay for a coffee. And then I walk over to the side, and I start to drink that coffee. And I think, whoa, this coffee is good. It is real good. And I actually walked up to a person that I was going to get on the plane with, and I said, this coffee is fabulous. And she said, well, uh, that's Starbucks. And what you might want to know is tomorrow, or maybe at least Monday, that company is going public. So you might want to go home and buy some of that Starbucks stock. Now, if I had gone home and bought that Starbucks stock, which of course I did not, I would have bought that stock just before it went public, and that stock would now probably be worth you know, a million, five million, ten million. That's what I mean by appreciated property. You got to be smarter than I was. I mean, I'm a lawyer. What do lawyers know about investments? I could tell you other stories that where I made equally foolish decisions. Um, but what we're talking about here is something you buy and you buy that stock, or you buy that land, or you buy a business, you've got to have owned it over a year. But if you've owned it over a year, then that's what we call long-term capital gain stock. And if you can make that $100,000 gift or that million-dollar gift with long term appreciated property, you can save income taxes twice, which is better than saving income taxes once. Let me give you, if I may, an illustration. If you look on the screen, what we have there is an example of someone who buys stock, or the other mistake I made many years ago, it was possibly land in Nantucket, which has probably been some of the most highly appreciating real estate in the country. Did I buy that? No. But let's assume I had. And let's assume, to keep it simple, that I paid for that land or that stock almost nothing. Let's assume my basis in that stock is practically zero for all practical purposes. And then that stock goes up in value to a million dollars. Now, if I write a check for a million dollars to the Wild Sheep Foundation, I'll have the joy of making a million dollar gift, 
I'll have a million dollar charitable deduction. That million dollar charitable deduction might save me at a 40% rate, about 400,000 of income tax. The cost of that million dollar gift to me will be $600,000. On the other hand, if I make a smarter gift, if possible, if I give that million dollars of highly appreciated stock, I'm going to save income taxes twice. First, I'm going to give a million dollars of appreciated stock, so I get a million dollar income tax deduction for that million dollars of appreciated stock. The deduction for a gift of appreciated property is its fair market value on the date of gift. And if that stock is now worth a million, that's a million dollar deduction. It's going to save the same 400000 of ordinary income tax that a cash gift say, saves. The difference is, with the gift of highly appreciated property, I not only get the million dollar deduction that saves 400000 of ordinary tax, I also bypass that penalty confiscatory capital gains tax that's otherwise imposed on that entire million dollar gain. And that entire million dollar gain at a minimum now would be taxed at a 20% rate and thus bypass an additional 200,000 of capital gains tax. So by giving the highly appreciated stock, I get the same joy of making a million dollar gift. I get a million dollar deduction. I save 400,000 of ordinary income tax. I also save 200,000 of capital gains tax. The total tax savings are now 600,000. We've reduced the cost of that gift from 600,000 down to 400,000, which of course is a reduction in the cost of that magnificent gift that will put and keep sheep on the mountain. Thank you for listening. This is another gift that I like very much. This is called the Give It Twice Trust. And this gift is primarily a gift, a state, and generation skipping tax saver. I had someone ask me once, I was traveling on a bus through Utah to go over to hike. And there was a fellow on the bus who really wanted to impress everybody else on the bus. And so he said, Wenton, Wenton, tell me what you consider a really major gift. And I knew what he wanted. But my answer was, Pete, what I consider a really major gift is a dollar. Anytime somebody gives a dollar, that's serious. That's an important gift. That's what I think of as a major gift, Pete. Now, that was not what he was looking for. He was looking for a big number. But that's really how I feel about it. Now, having said that, this particular gift, is for people who, what we say here in my area of the country, this is for people who've made some serious money. And what I mean by serious money is probably 5 million, 10 million, 20 million, 100 million, a billion. And the reason I say that is this particular gift, if somebody has a good fortune, either by result of their hard work 
or maybe by result of their uh, inheritance, that they've now got 10 million, 20 million, 50 million, 500 million, a billion. This gift is a way to eliminate gift tax, estate tax, and generation skipping tax. And I don't care how large the estate is. I recently had the experience of visiting with a person and that person's going to make a charitable gift. It's going to be about $200 million and it's going to the federal government. And if I had done a better job, that $200 million could be going not to the federal government. That's an unintentional gift when it goes to the federal government. It could go to the Wild Sheep Foundation if I had maybe done a little better job. So let's talk about how this gift works. We call it the Give It Twice Trust. And in addition to the Give It Twice Trust being a way to totally disinherit the government, it's also a way to lock down these higher gift and estate tax exemptions that may vanish in the very short term. Let's focus on how it eliminates gift and estate tax. If you look on the screen, you see an example, an illustration of a give it twice trust. And let's say in this particular situation, the, uh, the people who are considering making this gift have a $30 million estate. You know, they've made what we think of here as some serious money, $30 million. Now, if their estate is $30 million, even with the large exemptions that may vanish in about 90 days, with that $30 million estate, the top $10 million is going to result in a 40% death tax. So the top 10 million is going to make an unintentional charitable gift to Washington of $4 million. And there's a way this family can take that top 10 million and not make that unintentional $4 million gift to Washington. Instead, set aside that $10 million in a give it twice trust. Put the $10 million in, select an income payment that'll go to the Wild Sheep Foundation, select a term of years where that income payment will go to the Wild Sheep Foundation, and then after that term of years, the $10 million that has been put in there plus appreciation can eventually then go to children, grandchildren, others you want to benefit, totally gift, estate, and generation skipping tax-free. You know, this is the Give It Twice Trust. You give it once to the Wild Sheep Foundation. Then you give it again to children, grandchildren, other descendants. The only person you do not give to is the federal government. It's a magnificent gift, the Give It Twice Trust. It's also the case, let me kind of cut to the close here. What really makes this gift produce an amazing financial result for the children, the grandchildren, is if the trust, once the $10 million goes in there, can earn more than the applicable federal rate which is used to produce the income, uh, the gift of state tax deduction that protects it totally from tax. The current 
applicable rate is four tenths of one percent. The lowest it's ever been in the 30 years I've worked in this area. That means if one can put 10 million in there, and the trustees can earn more than four tenths of one percent, the eventual wealth transfer tax free to children, grandchildren, and descendants is going to produce a magnificent tax free financial inheritance for them. It may be sort of like a second inheritance. You know, at one's death, one may leave a certain amount to those children. Then after a certain number of years, they get this second inheritance tax-free that can provide an amazing financial result for them. Now, with the Give It Twice Trust, there's some ways to improve the result. And let me, if I may, mention a few of those ways that can improve the result. Many of you, when you've done your estate planning, you've used family limited partnerships, you've used limited liability companies, some of you have used limited liability partnerships, as a way both to obtain asset protection and also obtain a valuation discount in the value of those properties. So what we do with the Give It Twice Trust is we take that 10 million that they're going to put in the Give It Twice Trust, we put that 10 million in a limited liability company are in a family limited partnership. And if you look at the screen, when we put that 10 million in an FLP or an LLC, now we're, we've discounted it down to five. So the 10 million of property that we're now putting in the Give It Twice Trust, we now put it in at a discounted value down to five million. It's still producing the same income. It's just now producing a much higher percentage income because of the discount we got. And the result of that is you only have to run the trust a shorter term of years before that wealth eventually goes down totally tax free. Here's another way to make this dog hunt even a little better. If you look at the screen, we've now learned that you can set up the Give It Twice Trust, and you can, if you wish, start the Give It Twice Trust with a very low payout to the Wild Sheep Foundation. And then you can very gradually increase that payout to the Wild Sheep Foundation. And then when you get to the final year, you'll make a large gift to the Wild Sheep Foundation, a large enough gift that you're getting a 100% gift tax charitable deduction and a state tax charitable deduction for what you put in the trust. And that way the property can grow faster because you've got the graduated accelerating payout and thus it'll transfer even more wealth down to descendants totally free of tax. Then the final idea here with this trust is it's possible to set up a Give It Twice Trust where you not only put in 10 million that provides for the Wild Sheep Foundation and then eventually goes tax free to descendants, we structure it where the trust not only pro provides a 100% gift and estate tax deduction, we structure it to also provide a current income tax deduction in addition to the gift and estate tax deduction. And it just provides a 
benefit both in terms of saving income tax as well as estate tax. Now, the Give It Twice Trust, this is a trust which once again at the present time, giving the low applicable federal rate, if that trust only has to earn a total return that's greater than four-tenths of one percent, you know, there is an enormous opportunity here to really leverage what you put in the Give It Twice Trust, benefit the Wild Sheep Foundation, and eventually provide for your descendants. Let me mention one idea in closing. It's also possible to set up the Give It Twice Trust to use any one of the four versions we've talked about here, just depending on how fast you want to transfer the wealth down tax-free to the next generation. And instead of having the income payments go to the Wild Sheep Foundation, if you wish, they can go to your own private foundation. So all the income payments that are going to eventually allow the assets plus growth to eventually go tax-free to your descendants, the income payments are now staying in the family, going to the family private foundation. I'm hoping the family private foundation might then make gifts to the Wild Sheep Foundation, but it's very possible to use this idea where you put in 10 million, you put in 100 million, you put in 500 million, you keep every dime of it in the family. The income goes to the private foundation. And then eventually the Give It Twice Trust goes tax free to descendants. Many people will set up the Give It Twice Trust. They will, of course, make themselves trustee of it. They'll bring in their children to be co trustees, trying to train these children in philanthropy and, you know, allow them to participate in the joy of giving through that trust. And that can provide a real family benefit in terms of working together in this arena to put and keep sheep on the mountain. Let's talk about gifts that provide income. If you look on the screen, you see the names of a number of charitable gifts that all provide income. Let's start with what happens when you make one of these charitable gifts to the Wild Sheep Foundation that then provides income back to you, and if you wish, to your spouse or partner, and then eventually benefits the Wild Sheep Foundation. The first thing that's going to happen is the gift is going to increase your spendable income. The second thing that's going to happen as you make this gift that increases, and as you'll see, increases substantially your income, you're going to get a current income tax charitable deduction. And when you make a gift that dramatically increases your spendable income, what's the best time to then get an income tax deduction? It's when your income goes way up because you can then take that income tax charitable deduction in the year you make the gift, plus five additional years if needed to save a great deal of federal income tax. So when you make gifts that provide income, the first thing that happens is they increase your spendable income. We'll look at how this works. 
The second thing that happens is you get a sizable income tax charitable deduction that may provide that increased income over about five or six years in a way where you don't pay income tax on it. Then the third thing that happens with these gifts is these gifts provide a way to have a tax-free sale. If one contributes very highly appreciated property to this gift, then that very highly appreciated property can be sold tax-free, which means the full value of that highly appreciated property then is there to work for you and for your partner or spouse, if you wish, for your entire lifetimes, and then eventually benefit the Wild Sheep Foundation. So if you look on the screen, you see the result of making this type of gift. You also see the reasons why you might want to consider this gift. If you're someone who would like to have more spendable income, if you have highly appreciated stock, for example, that's paying you 1% spendable income, and you'd like to take that stock and perhaps diversify but when you diversify, you'd like that income coming back to be 6, 7, or 8 percent. That's a situation we should visit about. So another factor to consider is, do you own anything that you bought and it's gone way up in value? And you'd now like to consider a sale of it. And you'd like to consider a sale of it without paying any tax. It's hard for me to talk about these gifts without thinking about the people I've met over the last 30 years. And every time I talk about this, one of the people I remember is a guy over in Little Rock, Arkansas. You know, he was a down-to-earth guy. He was in sales. And then he started a bank. And that bank just went way up in value. So all these folks are flying in from New York, flying in from Charlotte, flying in from everywhere, trying to buy this bank. And when I'm visiting with this guy, I could barely get his attention. He was all over the place. And then all of a sudden, he's talking about selling this bank. And I say to him, Carl, would you like to sell this bank and pay no tax? I'm telling you, this guy who was all over the place, all of a sudden he was completely focused. And he wanted to know, how can I sell this bank and pay no tax? We'll look at that next. Another situation where you might want to consider making this type of gift is where you already have a charitable bequest in your will. If you've made the decision that you want to include the Wild Sheep Foundation in your will or revocable trust, you're raising the Wild Sheep Foundation to the level of a family member by including them in your will or trust, you've already decided to eventually benefit them over the very long term. And so by making this gift, you can essentially make the same kind of gift where you retain the use of the property for your lifetime and it eventually benefits the Wild Sheep Foundation. The difference here is, in addition, you get increased income, save a lot of income tax, bypass any tax on a sale. It's just sort of a situation that you might want to consider. So let's look. If you look at the screen, let's take a concrete example. And here what I 
am trying to illustrate on the screen is we've got property that somebody paid $100,000 for. And the property has now grown to a million dollars. So we've got somebody who pays $100,000 for it. It's grown to a million. I had the joy of working with a fellow by the name of Peter Lynch up in Boston. And Peter would call this a tin bagger. You pay $100,000, and it goes up 10 times in value. Now, if someone has the good fortune, perhaps in this country, they had listened to Peter, bought that kind of property, it's gone up 10 times. If one sells that property, the penalty capital gains tax on that sale would be $214,200. Now, I've raised the capital gains rate in this illustration to not only be 20%, but 23.8 with the new net investment income tax. The capital gains tax could be higher if there is a state capital gains tax. But here I'm assuming on this capital gain of 900000 we've got a federal capital gains tax of 23.8 which produces that capital gains tax of 214200 And let's suppose that person said, well now wait a minute, when they advised me to buy this stock, and it, they said it might go up, happily it has gone up. But what nobody told me is that if it goes up, you can't sell it because you're locked in. The stock has indeed appreciated, but if you sell it, you got to pay this confiscatory tax to the federal government. So isn't there some way I can sell that property and not have to pay that penalty confiscatory capital gains tax? And there is. One can transfer that property over into a charitable remainder unit trust or a charitable remainder annuity trust. And if one does, if one transfers it over into that trust, the result, if you look on the screen, is going to be as follows. Now, in this case, we were assuming that million dollars of stock was paying 1%. 1% is $10,000. If they put the million dollars of stock over into this trust and it has an 8% payment, then the income is going to go from $10,000 to $80,000 a year. That's a substantial increase in spendable income to go from $10,000 a year to $80,000 a year. And then the next thing that happens is they get a current income tax charitable deduction that they can use over a period of six years to save income tax. Now, that current income tax charitable deduction is going to be what we call the present value of the future eventual gift to the Wild Sheep Foundation. So if one puts a million dollars in this charitable remainder unit trust, they're not going to get a million dollar deduction. They would get a million dollar deduction for just a current gift. Here they're making a million dollar gift and receiving income back. So we go through a calculation that gives us that current income tax charitable deduction. It's often in the range of 40 to 60 percent of the gift. In an effort to try to be clear, I'm assuming that when that million dollars of stock goes in this charitable remainder unit trust, they get a 50 percent deduction. A 50 percent deduction, if they put a million dollars in, would be a half million dollars and they can then use that half million dollar deduction 
over a period of years to save as much as 200000 of federal income tax. And then we get to the really big tax savings. The big tax savings are the ability to sell that stock and not pay any penalty capital gains tax on the appreciation in that stock. And, you know, that is often both the motivation from a tax standpoint and the larger tax savings that occurs as one makes this gift. It's the benefit of a tax-free sale. And then when the property eventually goes to the Wild Sheep Foundation, there is, of course, no estate tax. So let's see what happens when a person makes this gift. If you look on the screen, what happens is this person, this family, John and Martha, they get the joy of making a million dollar gift. As they make a million dollar gift, their income goes from 10000 to 80000 a year. That's an eight-fold increase in their income, isn't it? And then as they make this gift where their income goes from 10000 to 80000 a year, they get a half million dollar income tax deduction, which in a 40% bracket saves them 200000 of federal income tax. So they've now made a gift where their income has gone up dramatically. They've saved 200000 of federal income tax, and we now get to the capital gain savings on that $900,000 gain, which saves them an additional 214200 of capital gains tax. That doesn't go to the government, which means the full million stays into the trust to now grow tax-free over their lifetimes and provide magnificent income to John and Martha, and then eventually go to the Wild Sheep Foundation. And when it eventually goes to the Wild Sheep Foundation, there's no federal death tax of $400,000 that occurs. So they get the joy of making a million dollar gift. They dramatically increase their income. They save a lot of income tax. They save a lot of capital gains tax. They bypass the death tax. They create an endowment at the Wild Sheep Foundation which will give forever to put and keep sheep on the mountain. It's a wonderful gift if it's something that fits your circumstances. Uh, my suggestion would be this. If you own anything, whether it's stock or land, or if you bought a bank that's increased 50-fold, or if you just own anything that's gone way up in value, before you sell it and pay that penalty confiscatory capital gains tax, let's visit. Let's just look at what this gift might do for you and those you love, as well as your charitable interest. Now, there is something here that I want to talk about. Let's suppose that John and Martha, they've looked at this. They're sheep hunters. You know, I played football all my life and I thought I was an athlete. And then I learned about sheep hunting. I'm not an athlete. Sheep hunters are athletes. They're an athlete. They're sheep hunters. And they've looked at this and they like it. They say, you mean we can take this million dollars of stock with a low basis? We can give it? And by giving it, our income can go way up? We can save a lot of income tax? We can save a lot of capital gains tax? We can bypass that horrific death tax? You mean we can do all that? And let's say we're sitting here in the living room and and I, and I say, yes, I think you can. So John says to Martha, actually Martha says to John before he says anything, 
John, I think this is something we ought to do. So now they're ready to do this. And then all of a sudden, there's a knock at the door. And John looks at Martha and he says, Martha, you expecting anybody? She says, no, not at all. But, you know, she gets up to answer the door. And then all of a sudden, she's coming back into the room with their son, John Jr. And John Jr., she comes to the door and says, John, honey, it's our son, John Jr. And they come into the room and John Jr. sits right here. He joins the discussion. And then let's just say that John turns to me and he says, When, why don't you explain to John Jr. what we're talking about? And I say, well, what we're talking about, John Jr., is your mother and dad giving a million dollars to the Wild Sheep Foundation. And you see John Jr. really just almost jump out of his chair. And I say, no, no, wait, John Jr., let me explain how this works. Your mother and dad will give a million dollars to the Wild Sheep Foundation, and the gift will dramatically increase their income. You know, they want to go on some more sheep hunts. So they'll be able to make this gift, dramatically increase their income, go on more sheep hunts, They'll get a big income tax deduction. They'll save a lot of income tax, John Jr. They'll bypass a big capital gains tax, John Jr. And they'll pay no debt tax, John Jr. when it all goes to the Wild Sheep Foundation. Now, John Jr., don't you think that's fantastic for your parents? I know you love them. Don't you think that would be something that possibly would really benefit them. And what does John Jr. say? John Jr. says, let me look at that screen again that you showed my parents. Now as I see that screen, John Jr. says, after this benefits my mom and dad, John and Martha, Following their lifetime, where does all that money go? It goes to the Wild Sheep Foundation. And so John Jr. says, what? I'm not so sure about this. And so at that point, we may want to suggest one additional idea where John and Martha get to make the gift, it quadruples their income. They save a lot of income tax. They save a lot of capital gains tax. They bypass the death tax. And we let the government replace the gift for John Jr. And the way that happens is if you look on the screen, this is the additional idea that can make that happen. John and Martha set up the Charitable Remainder Trust. The Charitable Remainder Trust dramatically increases their income. The Charitable Remainder Trust provides a big income tax deduction that saves 200,000 of federal income tax. The Charitable Remainder Trust bypasses capital gains tax. The Charitable Remainder Trust bypasses death tax. The Charitable Remainder Trust establishes the John and Martha Endowment at the Wild Sheep Foundation, which will give to put and keep sheep on the mountain forever. But it doesn't replace the gift for John Jr. So we add a second step. We set up what's called a wealth replacement trust, and we replace the gift they've made to the Wild Sheep Foundation 
in a manner where it'll grow tax-free and eventually go tax-free to John Jr. And who pays to set up that trust and replace the gift to John Jr.? The government does. Because if they get a half million dollar deduction and they save 200000 of income tax, $200,000 will pay a very nice single premium to set up the Wealth Replacement Trust and replace that gift for John Jr. So can someone make a charitable gift and replace it for one's children? Yes. Can somebody give a million dollars to the Wild Sheep Foundation as a current gift? Get a million dollar deduction? Save 400000 and take part of the tax savings and replace the gift? Yeah. And they can do the same thing with a charitable remainder trust using a wealth replacement trust. It replaces the gift for the children. Now, if I may, I'll conclude with this. Let me tell you what my experience has been with this. This is a good plan. This is a good plan. It'll work. It'll work all day and night. But what I find many times is once John and Martha understand that they can have all the benefits of setting up the charitable remainder trust, they can take the tax savings and replace the gift for John Jr. Once they understand that's quite possible, what I often hear is something like this, once John Jr. leaves smiling about this great new idea, John may say to Martha, Now Martha, uh, do I remember correctly that we sent John Jr. to the very best schools? We sent him to uh, pre-kindergarten. We sent him to... Uh, elementary education at a very fine school. We sent him up to Andover. We sent him to Yale. We got him a job at a very fine New York investment firm. He's doing very well. Do we really think we need to replace this gift for John Jr.? And they may or may not but it frees them once they understand they can replace the gift to either do that, which is perfectly fine, or they may conclude, you know, we don't want to endow this kid. We've seen the result too many times. So maybe we've done enough. In my part of the country, we call it root hog or die. Sink or swim. And, you know, it's a good thing. Because, you know, it's a good thing. It, it can lead to a happy life. And uh, so they'll think that through, and whatever decision they make, of course, is fine. But these gifts that provide a life income provide a lot of advantages. One I haven't mentioned is if they set up this trust if they put the million in it, that first year's income payment is 80000 But if the trust grows from a million to 100000 their income payment the second year is 88000 If it goes to a million two hundred thousand, as the trust grows, the income grows, which is good for them, and it's eventually good for the Wild Sheep Foundation. So if you own any highly appreciated property, don't sell it. Don't sell it and give a lot of it to the government without at least us having a chance to discuss this. You may or may not want to do it, but I would hope we'd at least have a chance to discuss it. Thank you for listening.